the file monitor task. The file monitor task allows you to monitor a specific remote machine for the creation, deletion, change, existence or non-existence of one or more files at a specific location. In order to run a file monitor task, you need Universal Agent for Windows, Linux or Unix, or ZOS running on the machine where you are monitoring for the file. So to create a file monitor task, you'll need to go to the Automation Center navigation pane, select Tasks, and then File Monitor Tasks. The File Monitor Task list displays a list of all currently defined file monitor tasks. So first, we click New. Then we need to enter an identifying task name for the file monitor. Next, we need to select an agent on which to run the file monitor. Click the drop down menu and select an agent. Alternatively, tick the agent variable box and manually enter an appropriate agent variable into the agent field. If specific credentials are needed to run the task, click the credentials drop down menu and select the appropriate credential. Again, you can use a variable here. By clicking the credentials variable box and enter the variable into the credential field. Now we need to select the monitor type, i.e. what are we looking to monitor. The drop down list lets you choose either create, wait for the creation of one or more files, delete, wait for the deletion of one or more files, change, monitor for a change in one or more files. Please note this is not supported for ZOS. Exists, check to see if one or more files already exist. And missing, check to see if one or more files do not exist. If you select, select Create, ticking the box Trigger on Existence will trigger the task if the file being monitored for creation already exists. Then you need to specify what file to monitor for here. Enter the location and name of a specific file or file pattern being monitored. You can use variables and wildcards in here as they're both supported. Ticking the box here enables the use of regular expressions in the monitor field. If you tick the recursive box, the monitor searches the specified directory and all subdirectories. Maximum files limits the number of files to be searched if wildcards have been used. The file owner field lets you specify the username or group name of the owner of the file on the operating system. That is the username or group name returned by the operating system in the file ownership information. LDAP groups are supported. Specifying a file owner limits the search to files with that owner. You may wish to check the stability of the file, and this option lets you specify in seconds a period of time in which the file has not changed. Scan text lets you enter a string that the monitor will search for in the file or files. Doing this means that only files containing the string constitute a match, and this field is processed as a regular expression. The result from this, if found or not, is set in the trigger file scan result built-in variable. Selecting delete has almost the same options, but is reduced to use regular expression, recursive, file owner, and maximum files. Again, specify the location and file name. Selecting change will give you some extra options based around how a file might change. First is by percentage, plus or minus. The amount that the file size has changed expressed as a percentage of the original file size. So for example, enter 10 to monitor for a change in the file size of 10%, larger or smaller. You can monitor the change by size in conjunction with by scale. This specifies an actual change in file size. For example, to monitor for a change in file size of 10 megabytes, enter 10 in this field and select megabytes in the by scale field. The to size field, when used in conjunction with the to scale field, specifies an actual file size that you want to monitor for. For example, to monitor for a file size of growing to 5 kilobytes, enter 5 in this field and select kilobytes in the to scale field. If you enable scan forward, this field specifies that once the file monitor has been satisfied, it should continue from where it left off. If it is scanning within a file, it should resume from the point in the file that it last scanned. 
If it's monitoring for files, it should resume monitoring for the next file. If you're scanning a file that is being overwritten each time, and you want to start from the beginning each time, you should disable scan forward. Next, selecting exists simply lets you specify if a file or files exist, letting you check by file owner and scanning the text. The last choice is checking if a file or files are missing, with the choice of searching recursively. The task itself will also have an extra tab available, File Monitor Triggers. Opening this tab will list all file monitor triggers that execute this task. Once you have a file monitor running, you will see an instance of it in the Instances tab of the task or in the Activity view as a running task. File monitor tasks are usually launched from a file monitor trigger or by being part of a workflow. However, you can always launch one manually. How it's processed depends on the manner in which it has been launched. A very common use for a file monitor is to launch it from a file monitor trigger. When you enable the trigger, it automatically launches the file monitor task. This will then be triggered when the file monitor task has its conditions satisfied. You can only disable the file monitor by disabling the file monitor trigger. There are also file monitor task variables available, which can be used to pass information from the task after it has been triggered. And typically these are used in file transfer tasks. When used in a workflow, the file monitor task will launch subsequent tasks if its condition is met, normally the creation, deletion or editing of a file. If you've launched the file monitor task manually and its conditions are not met, it'll run perpetually until you cancel or force finish it.